your audience will find you if you're making dope stuff, you know? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Portable Trevor here. And today we have a very special guest that I've been looking forward to. Please welcome Lelia Broussard. What's up? Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing today in this quarantine? <sighs> today I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Just been working on music in this hot studio, sweating, but <laughs> it's very hot in Los nice. Angeles today, but yeah, we're good. Yeah, I bet. And I'm over here in Georgia and it was like, the high was like 60 today, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's... I, it, <laughs> huge comparison. Or yeah. A huge difference. <laughs> yes. It, at the start of the quarantine, it was like raining like every day and it was really cold and then now it's like full on summer vibe oh yeah but do you typically like california weather yeah i mean can't complain about california weather it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome it does get really hot in the summer um but it's it's dope the winter is amazing it's 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 you can't beat it it's so nice it's nice yeah. all year round i i've always lived in the south so i feel like i've experienced every single season ever so <laughs> people that have lived in california for a long time are probably like what's snow what's the winter like <laughs> yeah i know i've i've lived all over the place and so i'm from the south too i'm from louisiana but mm -hmm. i've lived in i lived in new york for a long time and it's weird like here i feel like there are seasons but they're just milder like, mm -hmm. we definitely feel the seasons, but it's just, it's not as extreme, obviously. But, yeah. But yeah, I you, don't you really... said you've lived all over the place. Uh, what's been your favorite place so far? I like it here a lot. I'm going to turn it down. I keep hearing an echo. Um, echo. Hey. Um, no, I like it. I like California a lot. I love New York, too. Um, I don't know. A part of me will always love it there, but. It was, it was time for me to go. I miss it, but I don't, I don't know if I'd want to live there again. It's just so wonderful, but it's so intense, and I'm, I'm like in the California vibe right now. It's nice, especially now. I can't imagine being in New York right now. It would be horrible. So just is music like, what brought you all over the place, or was it just you yeah? To live there? Well, I was born in Louisiana, and then. You know, with my family, we moved to Philadelphia and I went to high school there. And then after that, I moved to New York and then um, lived there for a long time. I m moved here and then moved back to New York, moved to L.A. and then moved back to New York and then back. Again. <laughs> but, yeah, it's been kind How of many times was that <laughs> it was back and forth once oh, okay. <laughs> but uh yeah i it's i i it's all been music related the all all the moves um you know yeah the first time i moved to la was because i signed a publishing deal with the universal music group out here so i was writing songs and then i moved back to new york because i just still had a stronger like community out there and I was making a new record and um I was making it with a producer who lived there he lives here now but his name is Dan Romer he's uh he's amazing he's big into film scoring and stuff now um but he was there and just a bunch of my good friends were in New York and I just felt more connected to the scene there so I moved back and yeah, lived there for a long time and it was it was amazing. I had sorry, I'm still doing yeah. Um, it was amazing. I, I love I loved it. And then yeah, and then I just kind of I don't know, the chapter had closed. It was time time for a new thing. And then consequent consequentially like a ton of my friends that had lived in New York had have since moved here so pretty much everybody lives here now so I'm so back. what's the know. difference between the california music scene and the new york music scene well 
you know, I think it's different now because so many people from New York have moved here now. So it, it's mm-hmm. different that it's a different answer now than that would have been maybe 10 years ago, you know, but right. it's, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's, it, it's very different. There's a ton of, um, in New York, just a ton of lot. Not that there's not a lot of live music happening here. Cause there is, mm-hmm. but in New York, everything's so close together. So you go, you can just bop around and go to like five shows in a night, you know? And it's very, it's just very focused on live music. And, um, but because of space, a lot of people have moved to California. They can have studios like this, you know, that it's pretty difficult to have that kind of space in New York. So a lot of the writing and like songwriting and producers have like live here now. Um, so I don't know. It's just, I find them both to be great, especially now. There's so many people here. Um, New York is great too. It's, it's just like, I don't know. It's kind of like focused on different things. The people that I knew in New York were maybe a little bit less focused on technology and music. Mm-hmm. And then here it's like a lot of the big pop gigs are based out of here and hiring out of LA. And that kind of requires a whole other level of, you know, uh, you know, that's like you have a Kemper and you're like programming everything into the session. And not a lot of people do that. And I mean, as far as I know, the people that I knew mm-hmm. in New York, I think that's changing now. But it's just, I don't know, just kind of different. But So do you get focused uh, in really on, do you get focused on gear or do you try to work yeah. with what you got for the most part? No, I'm pretty into gear. <laughs> um, yeah, I... It's it's really fun. I think it, um, especially for live, there's so much. I just got a Kemper this year. And um, for those of you watching that don't know what that is, it's, um, it's a profiling amp. It's like, sounds incredible. Sorry, I'm like, just keep looking at mine. Uh, it sounds incredible. You, you are you like admiring it? Yeah, I'm just like, look at you, you beautiful workhorse. <laughs> no, but um, it's cool because obviously um, technology has come really far, um, mm-hmm. and it sounds incredible. We you can't really when you AB stuff, um, you can basically profile any amp that you want, and there's a l- lots of different processes for how to do that, but you know we've done some where you're being it, and you can't really tell the difference even. So it's like having you can have thousands of amps in your in this thing that sound just like the real thing. So you're eliminating noise completely. You're eliminating. I I got for the midnight tour. I got rid of my pedal board completely. I just had a volume pedal and a tuner and I did all the effects in the Kemper. So there's a lot you can do and they've come a long way with the delays and reverbs and stuff. And it's really cool. And yeah, I produce my own stuff too. And really into learning more all the time and trying to get better with uh, technology and music and embracing the two, you know? That's rad. So, um, I, I told you, as I told you before, I'm a filmmaker and like, if you ask a filmmaker for like, what kind of camera should you buy? It's yeah. usually like, uh, use the one that you got because yeah. is very expensive. So would you say mm-hmm. that that's the same for like when a musician asks for what you should buy? I mean, it's I, yes and no, you know, like there's certain things. I mean, I think, yeah, when you're first getting into something like use the stock plugins and like, like Ableton, for example, has a ton of like great stuff that are just stock sounds. And it's, you know, if you don't have extra money to go, it, and it's also can be overwhelming, I think, when you're first, especially when you're first starting out to just get a bunch of stuff that you don't even know how to use yet. So it's like, 
learn the thing and then you're like, okay, well, how do I make this sound better? And then you can start kind of adding things in from there. But yeah, I mean, I think Mm -hmm. being simple with it, especially when you're learning in the beginning is like very important. Uh, Do you remember the time whenever uh, you were finally like, yes, I can finally get this thing that I've always wanted to do to make this particular sound. Do you remember that time in your life? Uh, yeah. I mean, does that make sense? Totally. I feel like I, I I keep feeling that way every day because I'm learning more about, it's like, Oh, that's how you make this like effect with this like plugin or, you know, whatever. And I'm, I, I keep like, we keep adding things to our library (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we keep trying new things. So it's like, I feel like I'm still feeling that way all the time, you know? That's so rad. So you mentioned, uh, and this is actually how I discovered you. You mentioned uh, the Midnight Tour. You kind of just dropped that nugget and for anyone that's like, <laughs> listening, it's like, oh my gosh, you went on tour with the Midnight. That's dope. <laughs> um, so uh, really quick for everybody. So I am a huge, I keep mirroring myself. I'm a huge Midnight fan. I have kids uh, the, the album kids, not, you know, actual kids framed <laughs> on my wall um, and huge fans. So I saw the midnight um, and I think maybe, do you remember when that, what that day was the Athens? Show? Oh God, no, I don't remember. It was in the summer <laughs> I can't remember either. last year, yeah, right? Or like August or September or something. It was either September or August maybe, but anyway, yeah, it was that, a fantastic yeah. show. And uh, so I was like blown away. I was like, oh my God, this is very unexpected. And then I found Lilia on Instagram and I was like, uh, like I love following her because she posts all these guitar videos and she's a good singer. <laughs> so I finally hit her up and I was like, hey, you want to be on my show? Because I I w- wanted to get more musical acts. And uh, I feel like you also have some interesting stories to tell. Yeah. So that's honestly my first one because it's the one I'm most curious about. Like, how did you get started on the Midnight Tour? Like, how did like... <laughs> Tyler and Tim like get connected with you and everything I got connected with them well it's very funny because I got connected with them through um initially it was from a a manager of another artist that I used to play with um she recommended me and then it turns out Tyler and I especially had a ton of mutual friends and Mm -hmm. uh their manager and I had a ton of mutual friends And so they emailed me and we started talking and just from the singer songwriter world, Tyler and I, I don't think we had met. We, we can't figure out if we had actually met during this, during that time, but we just sort of ran in the same circles and knew a lot of the same people. So they were looking at a guitar player and they hit me up and um, I just, made some videos and stuff playing their songs and then they had me play with them. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. Were you yeah. already a pretty big fan of their music or did you like discover I, it as well, you were? Well, I had heard of them because my good friends, um, Savoir Dour had toured with them in Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had heard their name, but I, I hadn't heard their music actually. So um, it was, I, was learning everything, hearing everything for the first time. But it was it was cool. People had told me to check them out before, and I was like, yeah, cool. And then it, I just kind of dove in after they asked me to play with them, and it was great. So much fun. Such great songs. It was a pleasure. That's so cool. And yeah. you, for your, you said for your pedal boards, you just used two? No, uh, yeah. I mean, I just, I didn't use any. It was just a volume pedal and a, a tuner. Mm. And everything else was in uh, the Kemper. So basically, I made uh, patches for every part of every song. And mm-hmm. then I programmed that into the Ableton session. That's right. So, yeah, so, so it would change automatically with the music and stuff. Nice. Um, yeah. So. What was your experience like on tour with them? Have you ever been, have you been on a tour like that before? Yeah, I've I've done a lot of touring before, um, but yeah, they're so fun. They're the sweetest people, and we had such a blast. They made me feel so welcomed, 
and um yeah they're just really really nice people and uh, it was just a blast the shows were so fun they're like the most kind and like funny people and we had a lot of fun that's awesome what was the yeah. process like uh, learning all of their songs was that hard or did you learn them pretty um quickly? it was a little intense because i had like a week or two i think to learn like 25 songs or however many songs dang yeah so it was a, it was a lot of work before and that was not just learning them but programming sounds for every little tiny part too um so yeah it was a little intense but it was good it was fun it, it was like it all kind of <laughs> ended up coming together <laughs> yeah, was, was i was a little show. stressed but it was good singing. yeah oh i'm so glad you liked it that was fun <laughs> all right i keep I, I keep geeking out they're like still my favorite band so. oh that's awesome <laughs> uh, i love that I, uh that's funny you were talking about um uh, like having like mutual friends with Tyler. So one of my friends, Matt here in Georgia, he, uh, he went to college with Tyler. And, oh, cool. Uh, one day I like posted about them on my, on my Instagram story. And he messaged, Matt messaged me. He was like, why are you posting about my college friend, Tyler? You know him? <laughs> I was, no, do you, do you have any idea what he's been up to? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. Um, so did you have, was that, was that process of learning the songs? Was that like, easy did you have to learn new things did you have to like um or was that hard to learn the style what was that yeah like? i mean i um before this was not necessarily like a shredder guitar player person like yeah. that wasn't my style and i was like um <laughs> kind of like okay like that's not what i do i'll do my best and like give it a go and see how you like it but um yeah i definitely learned a lot of new things i um worked really hard to kind of execute what was on the records and to also do my own thing with it a little bit they were very open to you know creative like input in the live show which was really fun and that's not always the case so um mm -hmm. yeah I, I learned a ton of new things i really expanded my own playing doing that gig um it was fun it was challenging and fun so what's what's in your ballpark like what are you like most comfortable playing well i mean I, my background is um you know i was a singer songwriter for a long time so i feel like i'm most comfortable writing songs and i'm maybe more comfortable on bass. I was like a, a played bass in a band that I was in for a long time and sang harmonies and stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe I think maybe just like more atmos atmospheric guitar playing, which like I definitely added in their show too. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Does that, does that make sense? No, totally. And uh, so you said you've been on some other tours before. What, what other bands have you toured with? Um, before I was working with the midnight, I was, uh, playing guitar with this girl, Sin, who is on Katy Perry's label. Ooh. Uh, so I played with her for a couple of years and we toured with Katy Perry in Mexico, which was really fun. What? And yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. We played like What's arenas. She like? <laughs> she's really nice. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, awesome. yeah, she's, she's great. She's really cool. Uh, yeah, and I had actually met Katie like a year, like before she was even before her first single came out, like years ago in LA. We were like working with one of the same uh, people, um, mm -hmm. so that was kind of funny to like see her again after like ten years. But uh, she yeah, she. You? I had to remind her, but. Then she was like, oh, <laughs> my God, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was great. And then I've toured a ton with, um, I was in a band called Secret Someones. Um, and we did a ton of touring with all kinds of people over the years and with my own stuff and other couple other bands. But, yeah, it's been a lot of touring. 
over the last many years. Nice. And I feel like you just kind of glossed over performing in an arena. That's like an artist's <laughs> dream. That sounds horrifying. What's that? What's that like? It's crazy. It's really weird because it's it's like you're so it's like you, it's you're almost detached. You know, there's so many people that are, it's almost like feels like it's not even real. You know, it's just mm-hmm. like what? They're just so far away from everybody. And then, but then sometimes it's like the roar of the people is like, oh, oh my God, like crazy, crazy loud and exciting. And it's crazy like before the show too, when you don't have your in-ears in and you're just like listening and it's just like, holy crap, there's like 20,000 people here. That's crazy. Um, it was fun. I, I kind of like, I feel like I... I like the size venues we're playing with the midnight a little bit more because it's Mm -hmm. just like, or like, um, Oh, maybe a little bigger than the show. You saw like 3000 is like amazing because it's, it's really big, but like you still like feel all the people's energy. Sometimes with an arena, you can kind of lose the personal energy that you get from people. If if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Because you're just so, no, it's totally. like disconnected, you know? But it's cool. Some of my favorite cool. shows um, ever have been like small venues like The Midnight. And that's not like discounting, you know, what The Midnight can do. I know they can pull a lot of people. But sure, yeah. I love that show because it wasn't that big. But I could tell like just the vibe of the crowd was so cool. Yeah, like, I mean. A, a big fan. It's just nice to be able to like really feel the energy of people and you mm-hmm. you you just can't really as much in an arena. It's really fun but you just don't feel the people as much cuz you're just really far away. I don't know. But it's still cool. Do you get your energy from like the crowd do you feed off of that or are you yeah. just kind of in your own little world? No, majorly. Yeah. Majorly feed off the crowd. In such a big way. I don't know if people realize how much we all need them. <laughs> it's like ma- it makes it like completely. Mm-hmm. And it's like sometimes I feel like everybody sort of it's so weird because everybody has a different experience on stage. You're all, like it's like based on your own shit your own thing that's happening in your head based on how you think you're playing and then like what you're feeling from the crowd or whatever. But I mean, it's in every band I've ever been in. It's so funny. You like finish a show and one person is like, I hated that. Like I didn't, I didn't not that, you know, but like, just like I wasn't like feeling it. Like I was distracted or whatever. And then the other person would be like, what? Like that was my favorite show. Like that was so fun. You know, and it's just all about what's happening in your head and the energy that you're getting and giving back. And I always find that like the thing that I love the most about playing music is when it's like a a meditative state and you just kind of get to like turn off, like your brain like turns off and you're just like in this like flow state Mm -hmm. of like, I don't know. It's, but it's, it's very hard to do because there's so, you know, our brains are just like constantly like, you know, I'm like thinking all the time, but it's a magical thing when your brain turns off for that, for a song or for a little bit where you can just like, you're just like in it and you're with everybody. And I think that's the special thing that everybody can feel together when you're watching music, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I can't relate to a musician, but I did a theater in high school and I remember (laughs) like I would go up on stage, say my lines. And then as soon as like I walked off, I was like, I don't remember anything that I just said. Like (laughs) I was so into that. So I feel like that's kind of the same for you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. I mean, there are definitely times where I'm like, have been like so thinking about so many different details Mm-hmm. of like trying to execute something properly that I don't get that feeling and it's frustrating, but, 
but when you do, it's it's really good. Have you ever like walked off from a show and somebody approached you and was like, "Yo, that was so sick when you did this," and you were like, "I don't remember doing that." <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I think I like kind I I kind of like I don't like black out like I remember like what happened. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that you. has happened. I'm not sure. That's cool. And you're in a band now called Jupiter Winter. Uh, what can mm -hmm. you tell everyone about that? Yeah. Um, what is Jupiter Winter? Jupiter Winter <laughs> is um, it's actually a Sufjan Stevens song. And we named it that because we love Sufjan Stevens and it was a cool sounding thing. That's why we named it that. <laughs> It's hard to find a band name, but that was actually, I kind of have like a history of making up band names from song lyrics of artists that I like, like Secret Someone's My Old Band mm -hmm. was a Laura Veers song. And we were all really big fans of Laura Veers. And it's just kind of a good way to get something cool that's not taken. Um, I mean, Portable <laughs> Trevor has no meaning to it. <laughs> you know? But, um, it works. yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, myself and Royce Whitaker, who is a amazing musician and producer and we make everything together and yeah, it's a, very exciting. We're putting out a bunch of music this year and I'm really happy to be putting it out in the world. We've spent a lot of time kind of figuring out what it is so it feels good to put it out there you know nice what do you guys like to write about oh gosh it's just i mean they're super like personal just it's about human emotion it's about what we're going through or what our friends are going through i've written songs about when my friend is going through a really hard time and i'm kind of as an artist, sometimes it's like you need things to take to write about. So I've mm -hmm. like taken situations that my friends are going through that I just have really empathized with and written about that. I've written about my own, you know, insecurities as a human and just fucking life. Like whatever. I, I just like want to make music that is real and that people can really relate to and that people really feel some music with substance and um so yeah that's it that's important to us it's just about real shit whatever we're going through whatever our friends are going through just trying to express that the best way we can you know mm -hmm. And that's really cool. Like, I think music is such a great way to express yourself and yeah. like, those thoughts inside of you. Like, I think it's funny how many songs, like if you were to say that to someone to express how you're feeling, like just read lyrics, they'd be like, what the what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but in a song, it's like, I don't, I don't know. Does that make sense? Like, is, um, yeah, you're I mean, writing something, mm, go ahead. No, sorry. Go, what were you going to say? Oh, I was pretty much done. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, uh, music has literally always been how I have expressed myself emotionally, emotionally, like the, the clearest. It's the way that I um, process my feelings. And mm -hmm. so it's just something that I've always done. And it is so therapeutic for me. And I hope that other people like it too or can relate to the feeling and it, it and it's can be just so impactful to like put those feelings to a musical palette that makes sense or like another thing that I love to do is to like write a super super sad song and then disguise it with like a happy fun beat or something and yeah. making the music kind of not sound that way and it just sounds like a pop song but it's like if you play it like on the you know one instrument it's like oh fuck it's I sad listened to the single that you guys released a couple months ago i think it was is it come back to me yeah that's exactly yeah. what i'm talking about that mm -hmm. that song in particular is like it sounds really like fun 
and it's just like, oh, the song is fun. But we've been doing an arrangement of it on um, just two guitars when we play it live, and it's just like it just takes on a whole different thing, which is cool too. It's fun to reimagine the songs in that way. Do you usually keep like your performances in mind when you're making a song? Like, how are we going to do this live? Or do you just kind of let loose and make it? No, we just do whatever we want and then figure it out later. (laughs) And the thing is, is that basically our philosophy is that if it doesn't, if it's not translating to one or two instruments and a vocal, it's not a good song. I don't think Mm. so. if you can't play it like that, it's like, you should try better. Try, try harder. Um, that's, that's, that's my philosophy about songs. I think that it's great to have all this fun production and all these things. It's great. I love, I love it, but it should be able to stand on its own always. So. I got you. What are some musical inspirations that kind of strike you or mm, just some well, artists that have really spoke to you? So many different things i love prince like loved prince i love like i don't know i love so many things i love death cab for cutie and radiohead and um you know whitney houston and i love um madonna and i love uh i just love all kinds of stuff you know lately i've been really into phoebe bridgers and I really like the I new soccer her. mommy record. Yeah. I I love her. Um yeah, there's just so much great stuff and I I I love like Queens of the Stone Age. It's one of my fucking favorite bands ever. Like I don't know. There's so many things, so many things and they all have their little influences, you know. The Beatles, of course, like <sighs> You know, James Taylor, Al Green, like Motown. I just, you know, love love all kinds of stuff. Heck yeah. And um, did you listen to a lot of those artists like growing up and you were like, or what, what was the moment? Was there a particular artist that kind of made you pick up a guitar or pick up singing? I always sang since I could like talk. I was like one of the, I was just like singing and performing <laughs> were, you, were you just uh, trying to sing <laughs> yeah yeah I just I don't know it was just something that had always like came pretty naturally to me and so it was something mm-hmm. that I always loved to do mm-hmm. and then I started playing guitar when I was like 12 or 13 <laughs> I mean I loved like Alanis Morissette when I was growing up I, I remember I think like that Michelle Branch record came out I was like oh cool like I want to play guitar and write songs too. Like that, that was kind of my era when I was learning uh, music. And I don't know. I loved like Jewel too. Those are the, those are the things I was into the white stripes when I was a teenager. Uh, Yeah. You had to have played seven nation army on the bass. Oh yeah. Pretty recently actually for a gig. Really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wait for a gig. Yeah, I did this gig. That's so awesome. I did this gig um, in LA by a swimming pool, and it was for a burlesque performance. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty fun. We did Seven Nation Army and a bunch of other covers. Did everyone fun. get super hype? No, I mean, it was chill. <laughs> it was pool just party. like... Just, burlesque pool party. We were just chilling by the pool. It was fun. That reminds me of that scene from uh, La La Land when Ryan Gosling's playing with that cover band. I haven't seen La La Land. Can you oh, believe it's that? it's so good. Is it really good? Should I watch it? I, It's really weird. So it, it's very divisive. Like a lot of people that are into musical theater and stuff are like, that movie sucks. Because like mm. Ryan Gosling is, he's a jazz piano player and he's like phenomenal at it. And nobody oh. talks about that. I didn't know but that. But when he sings, he's really good too. Like he... When you see him play, playing the piano, that's like really him playing. Oh. And, uh, but when he sings, it's like average. It's sure. like raw, I would describe it. And so is, and Emma Stone's great, I think, but I just think it's a fun movie. Like I've watched it so many times. I oh. recommend it. 
I gotta watch it. I don't know why I never saw it. I'm not like a huge musical fan, but I mean, I loved, I loved musicals, like movies and stuff growing up. Like I loved Evita so much. So I thought I would like it. It's a fun time. But uh, (laughs) in that scene, Ryan Gosling's playing in like a cover band. Mm-hmm. And he's just like hating his life. Not saying you were. But <laughs> he's just like, he's playing like Take On Me. Yeah. And Emma Stone's like dancing and like making fun of him. And, cause she, <laughs> I can't remember what she requested. Uh, she she requested a run by Flock of Seagulls. And Ryan Gosling's like, I hate my life. Why would you recommend that? Because he like wants to be a jazz. He wants to be like a jazz pianist. And, he's a jazzman. Yeah. And he's just like, this is a disgrace. How dare you recommend that? <laughs> But it's a great movie. And nice. Um, do you live around LA? Because that's mostly what it's yeah. based around. Yeah. Yeah. Have to, we maybe we'll watch it tonight. Heck yeah! What were we talking about before this? <laughs> I don't even know. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were performing at a burlesque party. Oh and... yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Seven Nation Army at the for the burlesque dancers. <laughs> that's fun. What are some other things that you? Um, like you did growing up like musically or no, let me ask this. Like, did you, did you always want to pursue music as a career? Like from a young age? I did. Yeah. I, I've never like thought about really doing anything, anything else. Seriously. It was just always something that I've been really passionate about. So, um, yeah, I started writing songs when I was just a wee teen and just have been kind of trying to do the thing ever since. But yeah, I don't know. I played, I sang a lot and played guitar and started tinkering around in the studio with other musicians and just learning how to, learning how to do the thing, you know, trying to. Were your parents still learning. supportive? Yeah. Yeah, they were. My mom was like super supportive and, you know, got me a guitar and stuff and encouraged. It was very encouraging. And I had great teachers and people around me to help uh, guide, you know, what I was doing. So it was good. And I had a lot of time. I was like homeschooled for part of my life. So I had a lot of um, time similar to what's going on now (laughs) to just kind of like just do it you know I didn't have a lot of other things going on so I got to really like dive into uh music that's cool and uh looks like we got a comment DJ says there's a fan video of Los Angeles I'm guessing by the midnight on YouTube that you just moved scenes from that movie that's cool yeah check that out that is midnight Music videos are fan made, I think. Yeah. Well, I think like Tim initially made, I think Tim maybe started the trend because I think he made, he, I think he, he started like where he cut some of their songs to like old movies and then maybe other people have just continued on with that mm-hmm. tradition, which I think is so cool. I love that. That is really cool. Like I've like a lot of synth wavy like musicians, they have people do like fan made stuff. Like have you heard of Simpsons Wave? It's a very niche genre. No, what's that? <laughs> it's real it's like the most niche, niche, niche genre of like anything I've ever heard of. So it's like you use like, like Simpsons clips and you like mess with them and oh my god. You use like synth wave music and it make it's like it's really cool. It's holy crap. It's like wow, yeah. this is a thing. <laughs> You gotta send me a link to what you're talking about. That sounds crazy. Definitely will. Um, I'll actually do that as I ask you this next question. <laughs> um, so, your parents were supportive, and um, what did you? What was like the very first thing you did to like take that first step in your music career? Um, I we had a I I recorded like a little EP at this studio in Philly, um, which was really cool. They, it was a really cool place, actually. They re- they used to record, um, I don't know if you're familiar with World Cafe Live. Have you heard of that show? It's like a radio show. Not. 
It's like it's on um, NPR, all NPR things, I think. But the mm-hmm. station, 88.5 um, XPN, was based there, and they would record these um, segments at this studio. They had this big room that was like massive and it had a little stage in there and so it was really cool like they had I, I remember I got to see Jason Mraz's World Cafe Live and I had like never heard of him before and it was like right when his first single was coming out so I got to see a lot of cool like performances and stuff did his single already blow up when you met him it was yeah I hadn't I didn't meet him I just like got to watch this performance because oh, gotcha, gotcha. it was like at the studio that I was working at and um yeah but so we just recorded a little ep and i was playing shows around town and um yeah and then i like moved to new york after high school and i started i was just writing more and um doing little tours regional tours and stuff and playing with other musicians and uh, yeah that's kind of how everything got started i guess but that's cool. Yeah, it sounds like you're living the dream now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying. I don't know. I don't know about you're that. You're trying? I'm trying to live what, the dream. What advice would you give people? Because, uh, I mean, you know, they say like starving artists. Like that's kind of what I'm living right now here in Atlanta. Like what advice yeah. would you give to people Sorry. that are like trying to do what you do or just chase their dreams in general? I mean, you know. There, it's it's a really cool time right now because of the internet and all the resources that are available to us. And you can just kind of, I mean, look at the midnight, right? It's a pretty niche kind of music or genre. I mean, it's not really. It's just like beautiful pop music, but it's like a very specific genre that has gathered this insane audience because of the internet and like just doing whatever you want, whatever you're like stoked about and just doing it. And I mean, there's a lot of different ways to make money and sustain yourself. And it's can be difficult to sort of juggle everything, but there's a lot of things you can do. And I think that it doesn't, you don't have to be a starving artist. I think there, that that is like a, Sorry, I keep bumping this thing. That's something Mm -hmm. that has been, um, you know, people think that's what you will be or have to be if you're an artist. And that's not necessarily true. There's a lot of different things that you can do and ways to support yourself. So I just say find whatever. And like my friends um, have that band Wolfpack too. Do you know them? Are you friends with them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love Wolfpack. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. But look at yeah. that too. I mean, like this is the, these guys are for, for friends from college, and are just making whatever they want to make. It's weird, like cool. I mean, they're so insanely talented, mm-hmm. and they're just putting out whatever they want. And so it's like I think just like don't worry about what other people are doing, or if it's like commercial or not like don't worry about that just do you and make whatever the fuck you want to make because there's an audience for it and we have it it's here if if you if you want to you know it will your audience will find you if you're making dope stuff you know mm-hmm. i think just I like think focus it's... focus on your craft and just like do what excites you absolutely what have you been doing Cause like I did this show or I started this show because of like the quarantine and yeah, it was a way for me to be creative and just like, I've always wanted to do a talk show. And yeah. so what have you been doing to like stay creative during this quarantine? Cause this is like a prime time to like do what you want with mm-hmm. like no limitations or anything. Yeah. It's interesting. I feel like it's like I've gotten, I'm like, who It's like, oh, like, I feel like I'm getting to know myself again, almost, you know, having all this time to do whatever. It's just kind of, it's nice because I'm like, what do I want to do? What, what do I want to do? And sometimes it's cooking, like I'm really into cooking. And so I've been making all kinds of crazy stuff and making sourdough bread and 
Ooh. gardening and writing songs and taking like uh, some ear training courses, getting better at that. Like that's something I'd recommend to any musician. Ear training is really important. What um, does ear training look like? Ear training is... Or sound like. <laughs> <laughs> it's about... Um, it's about being able to learn things easily by ear and just understanding what you're doing so that mm. you can kind of pick things out easier and it's like me- memorizing um, what intervals are available to you and so you can do it I had mainly done it as it just like by ear just like based on the voice and now I'm kind of doing it as it relates to the guitar which is really fun Mm. and just like learning new things there's so many like resources online that are great but also it's like nice to take time to just be still and quiet and read and I started a garden and you know yeah but You're not the just first person to... I've heard that started a garden. Like, I swear, <laughs> like, like I need five of vegetables. my friends have started. <laughs> yeah, it's smart. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you like hear to do that, or did you just wake up one day and you were like, "I'm gonna start a garden"? I just was like, I want to. I don't know. I I just we had all these <laughs> like we we had all the we have these like little beds, like raised like beds in our front yard, and they were just like had they were just like had nothing in it like weeds and stuff and i was like we should make a garden and like when the grocery stores had like no food in them i was like we have to be self-sufficient and garden so we grow our food <laughs> <laughs> Gotta so, have those veggies. yeah it's it's fun it's nice and it's also just like nice to like see things grow it's just i don't know it feels good but. and i think that's another thing I think is really cool about you is it seems like you're always down to learn because like you learned 25 midnight songs in two weeks you like you yeah learned how to garden you learned how to make sourdough bread and <laughs> you're doing ear training so is there anything yeah. else like you're wanting to learn mm, I mean I feel like I'm learning a lot of stuff right now I'm def I'm 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 learning I'm trying to get better at production and um you know many different DAWs <laughs> um, and yeah just trying to trying to make stuff that that I am proud of and that's mm. always a learning experience trying to learn about myself trying to like be a bit more mindful and present and take care of my brain and my you know health trying to exercise it's just I feel like this time has kind of brought me back to the basics and just like, all right, what do I need? Just kind of taking care of myself, being easy with myself and just trying to do things that make me happy and inspired and to continue working on things that I'm trying to get better at, which is like a never ending list. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love asking artists this, but um, do you feel like when you're creating or uh, when you're playing music, do you feel like you it helps you find yourself more? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about like you're working on yourself and everything. Yeah, writing music helps me process my feelings. I can always like say it better in a song than I could ever articulate in plain words. So it's nice to just process life that way. And whatever I'm kind of thinking about, I sort of like go through it in the music, which is, I am feel really grateful to have that outlet because I don't know where I would be without it i'm super emotional and (laughs) i didn't need it you know i think most songwriters are emotional right yeah i think so we're a little sensitive babies (laughs) (laughs) can't really can't really be stone cold steve austin writing songs i guess i guess not you gotta be in touch (laughs) gotta be in touch with those feelings (laughs) (laughs) that's so awesome and uh um i think that's a beautiful thing about art is 
it's like one of the few things that can connect us besides like other people. Yeah. Like just looking at those things or um, like for me, uh, for filmmakers, there's a lot of pretentiousness in, in this business. Like, sure. I mean, in music like, you need too. To watch. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like people are like, you need to watch A24 films or Stanley Kubrick or if you watch Marvel movies and you're dumb. And yeah. Right. I'm like, but I love Marvel movies and I love things that make me feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, so, totally. I've you... had that I've had that kind of realization recently where it's like, I love pop music. I love pop music. I love writing pop songs. I'm really good at it. That's what I that just what comes naturally to me. So why I've spent so much time trying to shy away from it or make it let you know, and it's just like whatever do what you like you know and if that is pop music or if that's like if you love like fucking watching mark it's like we need to just do whatever we're into and like that's great because there is a space for all of it you know nothing is good or bad maybe some things but do you have any guilty pleasure (laughs) music or artists that you love listening to I don't think of anything as like a guilty pleasure. I don't know. I mean, like, oh, well, okay. I do. (laughs) I was like, there's nothing. But no, I mean, I do kind of like. realization. (laughs) Yeah. I I was like, nothing is. Well. um, (laughs) Never shout never. (laughs) (laughs) I do like listening to like pop country radio sometimes. It's so Mm. silly and ridiculous but i like it sometimes and so i sometimes i listen to it to like hate on it and i'm like this is bullshit um (laughs) and but but they're you know they're also really like well-crafted songs no matter how stupid they may seem so i enjoy that and um yeah that's something that maybe is a guilty pleasure it's not like i wouldn't it's not like my favorite type of music or anything but i'll 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 enjoy a dumb country song for sure. But I also love unironically old country Patsy Klein and Dolly Parton and Hank Williams and all that stuff. I love so much. Um, but yeah, the new country stuff. <laughs> so good. Working She's the best. Have you listened five. to, there's this podcast called Dolly Parton's America. No, what's it about? You should listen to it. Tyler and I were listening to it on on the on the tour. A bunch of us were actually, um, and it's uh, it's just like this interview with Dolly Parton. It's amazing. It's about her whole life, and it's so cool. Like new interviews or like archived yeah, interviews? No, it's recent. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, it's an I'll, NPR I'll thing. Check it's that out. Really cool. Have you heard of S Town? Yes, so good. Yes. So I got good. my roommate into that, and that's one of the best podcasts I think I've ever heard in my life. It's really good. It's really good. And yeah. I'm not really into podcasts very much. There's like oh. five podcasts that are, that are my go-tos, but what do you? Which ones do you like? Um, I don't know if you're into the YouTube world, but I love like the H3 podcast, and I don't uh, know that. Uh, they're really funny. If you're if you like them, like their YouTube channel, then you would like the show. Yeah. Um. There's also this really funny like rap duo. They're called Tiny Meat Gang, and they're really <laughs> funny. Nice. They, uh, it's a lot of dude humor, so I don't know if you're into that. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, like it, they're they're just really funny. What's what are some other ones that you listen to? Because I need some mm. more stuff to listen to during this quarantine. Oh, I listen to. Well, if you want to listen to the news, I like listening to the daily, but. We all need a break from the news right now. Oh, yeah. um, I listen to, I like Oprah's podcast. <laughs> I didn't know she had Still a podcast. Still personal Sunday, y'all. Check it out. It's great. Um, I listen to Savage Love. Do you know Dan Savage? No. He's like a love and sex advice columnist. He's mm. amazing. Um, I listen to... Like This American Life and Radio Lab and Snap Judgment is a cool one. Or The Moth is like always a fun story one. Have you heard that one? 
I have not. <laughs> I'm going to sound like I'm under a rock right now. <laughs> no, no. I mean, there's so many podcasts. It's crazy. Oh, another one that I really like is called Song Exploder. And it's about songs. And they interview artists about how a song is made. And that one's really cool. I'm really, really enjoying that. Nice. DJ, like I see about- all your recommendations. Uh, Mission oh. to the Zykes. Voyage oh. to the Stars, Hello from wow. the Magic Tavern. I don't know what that is. I recently I asked for those. podcast recommendations on my Instagram and got a ton of good ones. So I'm slowly making my way through. Have you heard of How Did This Get Made? That's a really popular one. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that, though. I haven't checked it out yet. It's really. Do you know what it's about? Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I listened to it on the way to... I went on, on a trip to Chicago last year and my roommate played it and I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but it's really great. But hey, uh, we're get, it, nearing the end of the show. And, Are you uh, ready? Is gonna, yeah, I think we're ready for you to play. Okay, great. Let me just get so my... you want to intro the song? Yeah. What's it about? You sound like you're from Canada. <laughs> a boot. <laughs> So, this song, um, sorry for the boomy microphone. Um, this song is called Oh My God. It is going to come out soon. We haven't put it out yet. We're just like finishing it up. Um, but it is just about feeling crazy. <laughs> it's about um, just being a little like sick of your own shit, you know? Um and just wanting to make a change, but not like knowing how. So it's called, oh my God. Nice, here we go. Time keeps passing by and I'm stuck in a circle moments come and gone still feel like I don't deserve it I'm off the deep end naked in my feelings hold my breath I don't know how long I can fake it when am I gonna get over myself it's bad for my health like oh my god I wanna live like everybody else it's time oh my god I can't help it I get so emotional I run myself in circles like an animal when am I gonna get over myself? It's bad for my health Like, oh my, oh my god Taking it easy Is easier said than done I am holding back I can't relax, I gotta get it well We're still young and I'm off the deep end Naked in my feelings Hold my breath I don't know how long I can fake it When am I gonna get over myself? It's bad for my health Like, oh my god I wanna live like Everybody else, it's time. Oh my God, I can't help it. I get so emotional. I run myself in circles like an animal. When am I gonna get over myself? It's bad for my health. Like, oh my, my God. Deep and naked in my feelings Hold my breath I don't know how long I can fake it When am I going 
gonna get over myself It's bad for my health Like, oh my god I wanna live like everybody else It's time Oh my god I can't help that I get so emotional I run myself in circles like an animal When am I gonna get over myself? It's bad for my health Like, oh my, my God I oh my God That was so good. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. When when can we expect it to come out? Soon, 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 soon. Probably like in the next month or so. Nice. And where can we find Jupiter Winter on everything? You can find us. Um, we are Jupiter Winter Band on Instagram. We are, oh my God, this is bad. I don't know what we are on Twitter. <laughs> oh no. Hold on. Don't worry. I've got the internet here oh okay don't worry guys i found it <laughs> on twitter we're jupiter winter underscore yeah we're on facebook we're on all the things say hi say hello and then i'm lily broussard on all the things l-e-l-i-a nice and um, yeah. i'm also uploading this to youtube so i'll put everything below and cool. i'll have a cool graphic come up whenever i'm editing but uh thank you so much for being on the show this was so oh, fun thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure yeah, definitely would like to have you come on again if you want. For sure. Heck yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.